George Galloway, in that the charities that I support, and there are lots of them, aren't affiliated, affiliated in any way with Hamas. And I am decidedly not anyone like Julius Stryker, the Nazi propagandist, though Mr. Keller publicly compared me to him. Mind you, he also told the National Post that older members of Kitchener-Waterloo anti-racist action remembered me years ago glorifying the neo-Nazi Holocaust denier and Zundel. That was just delightful to be described that way in a story that started on the front page of a very good newspaper where I used to work. Now, I knew I was nothing of the sort, knew I'd never written anything of the sort, but I nonetheless asked a Globe and Mail researcher to go through three decades of my work for four Toronto newspapers. In all those years, she found all of five columns, or an average week's output for me, in which I'd even mentioned Mr. Zundel, always with contempt, and in the only piece that was actually significantly about him, I defended his right to speak, but opposed him being granted Canadian citizenship. This hardly qualifies as glorification. So what on earth did I do to be on the receiving end of all this and at the center of a hullabaloo? Oh yes, I wrote a book. criminal courts reporter by trade. For many years, I've spent the bulk of my professional life in courtrooms covering trials. I care about the law and justice and the rule of law. So when I decided I was going to write this book, my interest was in the law and how the authorities failed to enforce it equally during the Caledonia occupation. And my slight experience was in, or expertise was in this area and any, ex any experience I'd had. I also imagined I could write about the rule of law without also writing about the convoluted history of the Plank Road and Six Nations and the Haudenosaunee, and I still believe that. It's a, well, I think it was a sacred cow. Nobody wants to see Aboriginal Canadians in a bad light. We're all fine with seeing them in a, in a sympathetic <coughs> light. In other words, terrible <coughs> living conditions, bad governments uh, screwed over in the land claims process, absolutely, and all those things happen to a degree or another. But we don't ever want to consider that, you know, first of all, that they may be getting tired of the slow pace of land claims settlement, that they may be getting frustrated, that they may be prepared to break the law, and we don't want to acknowledge that and our own failure. And who was in charge of the OPP's most important squad, the Aboriginal Relations Team, on the ground in Caledonia at DCE, but the first cousin of Dudley George. Dudley George is killed in 1995 by an OPP officer in an ill-fated raid. 11 years later, the next significant big native occupation in the province, and who's the guy calling the shots? <coughs> Dudley George's first cousin. Am I the only one who finds that massively inappropriate? Slip my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm not the judge of my book. I mean, I, I wrote it, so I'm not in the best position to say how successfully I did it. But, I mean, certainly that's what motivated me to tell the story, you know. I, it was told well locally in uh, regional papers and regional newscasts, but it wasn't told nationally, and I thought it deserved a, a broader, you know, canvas, I guess. Have we learned any lessons? No, oh, I don't think so. Not a fucking chance. No. Do you see any evidence anybody's learned anything? So, uh, as a journalist student, what can I, what can we learn about the way the media covered the issue? Um, that you know, I, I think we sh we shouldn't allow ourselves to treat the the many uh, sacred cows uh, in Canadian society as sacred cows. I mean, we should be the ones. And uh, I mean, I'm responsible too for this. I mean, I wasn't here for some of it, but I wasn't very quick on the you know, catching up on it when I got back from Afghanistan, uh, we have to pay attention not just to people who we expect will be oppressed, but sometimes people who look like they wouldn't be oppressed but are. And that's a pretty good description of the people in Caledonia, you know, mostly white middle class people who normally all have it pretty good, like me, but in this instance did not. Yeah, I was stunned, and and I think I think the university people were stunned too. I mean, I had expected there might be some criticism, and you got some sense of that if you were here tonight. And fair enough, you know, I answer questions uh, for at least as long as I did tonight, always, and sometimes for longer. But I never expected that anybody would try and shut me down, or that they would chant racist at a stage where I was expected to to be. And I mean, so I was really I was quite quite uh, you know shocked and bewildered and. Anyway, so I'm very glad it went well tonight. I think the university was much better prepared and it was a much better test of their commitment to uh, freedom of expression than the, f than the first instance, frankly. Nobody was very well prepared. You know. God bless Dan Keller. Driving up sales everywhere he goes. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true.